find the slope between the two points, negative 4, 3, and 2, comma 5. All right, so what we're going to do for this is um, I need to find the, the slope between the two points. So what I'm going to do is um, to find the slope. What is the slope? Well, all slope is is a ratio between the change in y values over the change in the x values. So there's a couple ways we can kind of look at this. Um, you know, we know a coordinate point or an ordered pair is represented as an x and a y, right? So we could go ahead and plot these two points. Now I'm just going to do this for a representation. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, up 3, 1, 2, 3. And then this one is over 1, 2, up 5. Okay. Okay. So we can do this. Now slope, like I said, it's a ratio. So therefore, you're going to have a fraction. And what it is is the change in your y values over the change in my x. Sometimes some people like to say rise over run. And that's more applicable to when you're looking at a graph. Um, and you know, really all it is is the change in my y values over the change in my x. So let's look at how we're going to do this. Well, how do I find the change between 5 and 3? And one thing I, you know, you guys might have seen is if I, these are my y values, right? So how am I vertically changing? Well, let's just look at what my y values are. For this, I have 5. For this one, I have 5. And for this one, I have 3. So what is the change? How far do I have to go from 3 to 5? Well, I have to go 2 units up, right? Well, another way we could do that is we could simply do 5 minus 2. I'm sorry, 5 minus 3, right? Okay, we could simply do 5 minus 3. And then I say, how far are we going left and right? And when I'm going left and right, you could say, well, you went from, this point was negative 4, all the way over to 2. So I went from, how many units over did I go? Well, 4 units to get us to here. And then I went over another 2 units. So 4 plus 2 is going to give me 6. So I went 6 units over. Well, how can I really, you know, how can, what's another way to represent that? Well, what if I did 2 minus a negative 4? And again, what you guys will see is this is going to give me 2 over 6, which is equal to 1 third. So that's one way to write, and that's kind of like the longer way. Uh, when you get to a lot of problems, you kind of need kind of a quick understanding of how to do it. So if you guys notice, I have two points. I have an x and y and an x and y. Another way we can do it is by using what we call the slope formula, which is exactly what I just did, but it's a little bit more mathematical understanding. So what we're going to do for the slope formula is I'm going to give this the abbreviation x1 and this one x2. It doesn't mean anything all, except for it's just telling us those are different x's. x1 tells us this x value. x2 tells us this x value. And we do the same thing for the y's. This one's y1 represents this y value. This y2 represents this y value. So the slope formula is this. We let m represent slope. Change in y is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And so what you happen, what happens is, and it doesn't really matter how you label it. I could have labeled these x1, x2, or y1, and this one x2 and y2. It doesn't matter which way you do it. But what you'll notice is I get the exact same work that I just did over here. y2 is 5 minus y1 is 3 all over x2 is 2. Y1 is negative 4. So therefore, again, I get 2 over 6, which is equal to 1 third. So remember, when you're finding the change of something, you're going to be using subtraction. And just remember, slope is the ratio of the change in y values over the change in your x values. And that's how you find the slope between two points.